The Corvette is widely regarded as America's sports car. The Chevrolet Corvette has been in production since 1953, making it one of the longest running production vehicles in history. Of course, it's also one that has occasionally risked the axe, especially in times of stress for Chevrolet parent General Motors. In spite of that, the car has endured and it is about to undergo its biggest change in history. The Corvette is becoming a mid-engined sports car, and it is one of a small number of mid-engined sports cars that can be bought for less than six figures. GM President Mark Royce told the crowd at the new Corvette's unveiling that the car would start at less than $60,000 and gasps could be heard from the audience. To understand what this means, it is important to take a look at Corvette's history. The first Corvette was designed by legendary General Motors designer Harley Earl. Earl saw that American soldiers returning from Europe after World War II had gone crazy for European sports cars, and he wanted to create an American competitor. GM built 300 of the first Corvettes in 1953. While the initial Corvette was a virtual masterpiece of automotive design, the car's performance was mediocre. GM engineers had put the car together from materials the company had on hand. Its six-cylinder engine lacked the horsepower needed to match the car's sleek looks. The first Corvette sold poorly and was being outsold several times over by competitors, such as the Ford Thunderbird. Just a few years after its creation, the Corvette was already in danger of being discontinued. But the car had caught the attention of a Belgian-born immigrant engineer and race car driver named Zora Arcus Duntoff, who soon got a job with GM and became the Corvette's first chief engineer. Arcus Duntoff is credited with pushing for a sportier, higher-performing Corvette. Over time, the car grew a reputation as a working man's answer to high-end Italian and German supercars and developed a proud and devoted following. Apart from its lower price, it also over time became known for keeping its engine in the front of the car, like many conventional cars. But the performance and handling of a mid-engine layout is often favored among makers of supercars and high-end sports cars. Arcus Duntoff had pressed his bosses to make a mid-engine Corvette, and for years, the company experimented with designs. You know, creating a car with the drivetrain centralized in the middle of the vehicle helps centralize the mass. And when you do that, you end up with more equal weight between the front and rear axles and on the front and rear tires. And essentially, that makes the car more stable, even at higher speeds and even around sharper corners or through braking and acceleration. Everything you're doing in the car, especially as a performance car, is more stable and more balanced when you have mass centralized with a mid-engine design. Over the years, the company developed different iterations of what was called the Chevrolet Experimental Research Vehicle, or CERV. These cars were outfitted with mid-engine configurations, to some of which Duntoff himself held patents. But none of the designs ever made it to production, even as high-end performance vehicles from other manufacturers routinely demonstrated the advantages of the mid-engined layout. That Corvette was able to compete with many far more expensive cars was impressive. That it did so while keeping its engine in the front of the car, for many of its fans, added to its charm. In some ways, the car appeared to succeed in spite of itself. Um, I think that when we talk about Corvette and the idea that it stayed true for so long to its heritage, right? Front engine, rear drive. And over time, as we saw more mid-engine cars coming out, performance levels getting higher and higher. And part of the, you know, the mystique and the, the aura around mid-engine was literally that, was the engines like right behind your head. Changes like ride and drive dynamics too, but it kind of gave this idea that, oh, to compete at this level, you have to have a mid-engine. But at the same time, Corvette soldiered on and it, it was breaking Nuremberg lap ring records. It was crazy amounts of power, grip, all despite the fact that it didn't have this latest and greatest exotic car mid-engine. 
Part of its success has come from the credibility Corvette has established in racing. Corvettes have been a popular choice for racing enthusiasts for decades, even when General Motors has not been formally involved in racing. In 1960, a private race team entered a Corvette in the 24 Hours of Le Mans Endurance Race in Le Mans, France. In 1999, GM began sponsoring a Corvette racing team, which has since won 107 races around the world. That is more than any other car in the history of the International Motorsports Association, one of the major sanctioning bodies for racing in North America. In addition, the current Corvette racing team has had eight victories in the cars class in the 24 Hours of Le Mans race since 2001. The Corvette also benefited from some clever publicity courtesy of early NASA astronauts. In the early 1960s, GM President Ed Cole and a Florida Chevrolet dealer named Jim Rathman, a former Indy 500 winner, offered astronauts from some of the Apollo missions a special deal that let them drive any Chevrolet vehicle they wanted for a year for one dollar. Many, of course, chose the Corvette. That doesn't mean things have always been easy for the Corvette. General Motors has been close to canceling the car a few times, but it's always seemed to save it at the last minute. One famous incident was in the 1990s when GM wanted to shut down the Corvette program in favor of more popular models. At that time, the company was reportedly losing $1,000 on every Corvette it made. But Corvette program manager Russ McLean and his team secretly went to work on a new Corvette. McLean told no one except his wife that he had been ordered to cancel the car. The car they created was released in 1997 and became Motor Trend's Car of the Year in 1998. Corvette sales have seen a decline in recent years, falling from 33,329 units in 2015 to 18,791 units in 2018. GM, along with rivals Ford and Fiat Chrysler, have rapidly been abandoning traditional passenger cars. However, industry watchers say the Corvette name has now lived long enough to attain a kind of iconic status, not unlike the Ford Mustang, which Ford has decided to hold on to even as it slowly drains its portfolio of traditional sedans and coupes. But General Motors has decided it is time for a big change to Corvette, and many industry observers say the mid-engine gives GM a shot at attracting a new audience to the car. I think for General Motors and virtually every automaker who's mainstream or even the luxury brands that have these halo cars, the rationale is literally that is that we have to have something that brings you into the showroom or gets our own employees excited because it does have that trickle down effect from said vehicle. And it's one of those things where you're never gonna justify it on paper. If you work in product planning, you work at corporate bean counting, whatever you wanna call it, on paper, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Can you truly measure its effect overall? Not really. I mean, if you really want to extrapolate it down to word of mouth kind of thing, which again is probably one of the highest, you know, most reputable things is, oh, I heard it from X, Y, Z. And you really can't measure stuff like that. You can say, you know, on the internet, we saw this much activity, we saw this many clicks. But in the end of the day, it's one of those things that you really can't measure people's feelings. And we know that cars of this nature, they stir the soul and they get people excited. The new Corvette boasts some impressive specs. It will have 495 horsepower, and when paired with a performance package, will be able to go from zero to 60 in under three seconds, according to GM. That is approaching supercar performance levels. For example, it is within just fractions of a second of the times boasted by the $350,000 Ferrari 488 Pista and the $573,000 Lamborghini Aventador SVJ Roadster. Chevrolet said redesigning the new Corvette from the ground up provided a historic opportunity Chevrolet designers have wanted for 60 years. The company said the Corvette can stand tall with the best the world has to offer. GM President Mark Royce also said Corvette has pushed the potential of its front engine design as far as it can go. But not everyone is happy about the switch to a mid-engine layout. Some longtime Corvette fans have cried foul over the change. Some consider it a betrayal of Corvette's legacy. Some complain the car is just aping European designs and some don't like how the mid-engine layout changes the car's proportions. Others 
are more optimistic, if a bit guarded. General Motors has been trying to cut costs and improve profitability, and its push has resulted in some bold, if controversial, moves, such as cutting production of several of its passenger cars in late 2018. As of September 2019, shares of GM had risen about 12% over the past five years. With sales being so small, many think Corvette's status as a kind of halo car becomes ever more important to its survival. It gives GM a chance to make an inspiring, attention-grabbing vehicle and showcase the company's engineering talent. By switching over to a mid-engine design, Corvette is showing it can make a world-class vehicle and undercut higher-end makers of supercars in price. It's always fascinating to watch the supercar evolution, right? The, the, this, is a, this is a segment that doesn't stop. It's, it's never standing still. It's never static. Every, not even year, it's really more like almost every three to four months, there's another supercar coming around the corner. Uh, I think General Motors has stepped into this competitive segment with a very capable entry in this new C8 Corvette. Thank you for watching the Corvette channel. Don't forget to hit subscribe.